Hello, welcome to another video and today we're going to be talking about 7, 9 USMT players that need to go to the MLS. So, let's begin. So, obviously with the with the January transfer just opening, obviously this is another time for USMT players to be going abroad. But as well, this is time for some USMT players to go back to the MLS in order to find some form and obviously to find some first few minutes before going back to Europe in order to find that European dream. So let's begin. So today we're going to be starting off with Ulianas. Ulianas used to be a very promising winger and obviously he was a he's a pretty creative player as well. Ulianas, he played in the 2019 U20 World Cups. He looked very, he looked promising. He was one, like one of the most promising players from that group. Obviously, for me, the for the twenty nineteen World U twenty World Cup, for me, the most promising players were probably were Chris Richards, Sergio Dest, uh, Tim Ma, Obviously, Sebastian Soto looks really good as well during that tournament. Most of us would don't were not forget we're not we're not never forget Sebastian Soto and his performances in that U twenty World Cup. Alex Mendez was really promising in that tournament as well. As well, other players as well were very promising. Uh, Mark McKenzie obviously was part of that group. He was pretty promising as well. Chichuro Dunze and David Ochoa, they looked very promising. David Ochoa would later be going to the, wanted to represent Mexico later. Julian Arajos was as well part of that group as well. So obviously there was plenty of players. Richie, Richie Ledesma. So obviously there was a lot of players that were part of the U20 World, World Cup group. But obviously, Ulianas has kind of been one of those uh, promising players that has kind of struggled ever since. Uh, Ulianas has kind of been going on loan repeatedly, repeatedly. So I do believe a transfer back to the MLS would be doing some good for him. Uh, their Houston Dynamo uh, were one of those teams interested earlier on. And I do believe the team like the Houston Dynamo would be needing a team like Ulianas. Uh, for me, Ulianas has kind of been struggling in the second division of Austria, and if you're struggling to get to get into that level, I do believe a, a transfer back to the MLS can do something good for you. Uh, obviously, for me, I do believe you transferring a transfer back to the MLS, like a team like the Houston Dynamo, can do something good for him. Uh, what are other teams that I can see doing some work? San Jose? May San Jose might. Uh, uh, play him playing as a winger in San Jose might be doing some good for him as well. There's so there's a lot of so there's some some places where he can favor him. Uh, where where are others as well, just apart from just San Jose and Houston? Uh, I do believe those are the two markets that I can see only on as thriving because I do believe that it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good um. It's a pretty good environment for Oliana to be in. So yeah, now let's just go to the next player, which is going to be Tyler Boyd. So Tyler Boyd used to be a, a, in the U twenty in the twenty in our squad. Uh, he was in the twenty nineteen Gold Cup. Uh, he was pretty all right during that tournament. But whenever we faced like actual competition, obviously Tyler Boyd was well. He was invisible. Invisible. He was invisible. Tyler Boyd was nowhere to be seen. When he was playing against the actual competition, uh, he had one good season in Turkey, but after that, he has kind of like been struggling all ever since. And I do believe a transfer to the MLS can do something good for Tyler Boyd in his career. He can find some stability. He can become a role player. He can secure some minutes, and more importantly, some first team minutes. So there are some spots where I can see him thriving. Uh, obviously, St. Louis City, obviously one of those expansion teams. Say, um. An expansion team is where he can thrive in since they don't have a lot of players. Uh, as another place that I can see on Tyler Boyd do, do good in is probably like a team like Chicago Fire that need wide players. Obviously, that's another good place to be in for Tyler Boyd. Um, I, I don't think Tyler Boyd would necessarily be a, a starter in MLS for a, good, for a good team that is in the playoffs. But a lower team, I can see Tyler Boyd being over there. Tyler Boyd, like if it's twenty nineteen, Tyler Boyd, like his prime, like he might be starting for any for any MLS team, to be exact. But obviously, like he's been struggling with injuries. He's kind of been hit with injuries, so obviously he's going down in like in his talents as well. So I obviously for me, obviously since he has kind of been down in quality, I do believe a transfer to the MLS is right now appropriate for Tyler Boyd. 
So yeah, now let's go to the next part, which is going to be Joel Senora. Joel Senora is um, Senora's brother. Uh, he was he was recently with Marty Timo in the Portuguese league, but he has been released. So obviously, a team, so obviously for me, he can kind of be like an MLS role player. I do believe that. Uh, teams like that need midfielders. Obviously, there's some some teams that obviously I do see they need midfielders are like New England Revolution, uh, Orlando might need some, um, other teams as well that just need those mids. Obviously, there are a lot. There's some. There are some teams that do need midfielders. Houston Dynamo maybe. So obviously, a team that needs midfielders mid, needs midfielders. I do see Joel Senora be in there. Obviously, for me, he's kind of like a very average player. I don't ever think he'll be national team quality. So, obviously, for me, a transfer back to the MLS, a transfer to the MLS can just secure some minutes for Joel Senora. And, obviously, he can get paid over there in that league. So, obviously, there's more point of being in the MLS than him trying to be ambitious and trying to be in Europe and stuff. So, yeah. Now, let's go to the next player, which is going to be Sebastian Soto. Sebastian Soto, hey, he's one of those most, he's one of the more promising players from that U20 World Cup pool. But obviously, ever since the U20 World Cup, obviously, he scored four goals in that tournament. But ever since, he cannot be finding the net. Like, he found the net twice against Panama, the um, Sebastian Soto, back in a friendly. But we cannot, we, we cannot confirm if those Panamanian players were actually professional soccer players because obviously Sebastian Soto, if, if Sebastian Soto scores two goals past you, like, there's, there's something wrong with those defenders, like, let's be honest. Um, and obviously for me, he needs to transfer back to the MLS. Uh, more, more, because he has been struggling to find a home in Europe. And obviously for me, it's, it's kind of like, just say they transfer back to the MLS. Find some, find some minutes in the MLS. Find a team that gives you minutes, and voila, you can go back to the M. You can go maybe go back to Europe if you're good enough, because right now it's it's a pretty obvious that you're not good enough to be out there in Europe. It's probably not. It's probably very obvious to you right now that obviously you are struggling in the European environment. So obviously for me, I do believe Sebastian Toto needs to transfer back to the MLS. Like, before it's too late, before he is, like, a player with no, like, value at all, he has very little value right now. And I do believe if he wants to at least save a little bit of that value, he needs to go back to the MLS. Like, no it's no ifs and buts. Just go back to the MLS. Just go back. That's all we're asking for you, Sebastian. Just go back to the MLS. Find some form. Find... Find goals because find minutes and goals. But first, find those minutes, then find the goals. Because obviously, right now, your career is like it's kind of like been been sinking down. Uh, next is Matthew Hoppy. Matthew Hoppy right now is twenty one years old. He's in Middlesbrough's reserves right now, and he will he used to be a starter in Schalke, and right now he's in Middlesbrough's reserves. So obviously, there's something wrong right now going on with Matthew Hoppy, and I do see Matthew Hoppy needing a transfer to the MLS. Atlanta United used to have an interest in Matthew Hoppy, and with Ma Atlanta United selling um, Dawson Martinez, I do believe that, uh, a team like that can favor Matthew Hoppy a lot. Um, what are other teams that, need, that are currently needing strikers right now? Minnesota United, obviously they're always a good team, but obviously they always, they always needed that number nine. So I do believe Matthew Hoppy can fill those boots in. Uh, there are a there are a bunch of other clubs that do need nines, but for me, I do believe um Atlanta United should be his first choice probably because my Atlanta United at least they do give some minutes to um two young Americans like like Caleb Boyley and Miles Robinson in the past and George Vela as well. Um, so obviously those two, those type of clubs, though, a team like Atlanta United is probably a good home for Matthew Hoppy, and I do believe Matthew Hoppy needs to find some confidence in the MLS before it's too late. Uh, I do believe that we, if he manages to turn it around, I do believe we can see him at the Olympics in twenty twenty four. He's eligible for that, and obviously I would like to see him in the Olympics score some goals for the United States over there. So yeah, now let's go to. A center back, um, which is going to be Nico Carrera. Nico Carrera is 20 years old, and right now he's in 
I cannot pronounce that name, Hoshan Kiel and Bundesliga 2. He's not even starting over there, so I do believe he needs to go to the MLS, um, which is probably the most appropriate thing for him to do right now. Uh, obviously, there in MLS, obviously, there's not a lot of good defenders, so obviously, he can probably be starting for any mid-table um, MLS team. Um, obviously, there there are plenty of uh, plenty of MLS um, teams that need center backs right now. Chicago Friar is just a prime example of that. Obviously, um, <laughs> Chicago Friar is just bad. Honestly, all around bad. If bad, uh, if you have Gaga Sunina on goal and they're still scoring a lot of goals past you, there's something wrong with those defenders, man. Like, obviously, Nico Carrera, I can I can see him getting those minutes. And Chicago Friar, honestly, any any defender can get it. any defender with a little bit of quality can get a lot of minutes in the, in Chicago Friar. Let's be honest. Uh, <laughs> Obviously, right now, Nico Carrera has kind of been talking with Johan Gomez on a podcast, talking about what, what team he should choose and all of that stuff. But I think he should first focus on getting those first few minutes and obviously performing before he makes um, comments about him go, go, um, cho choosing whatever, whatever nation he wants to. Because obviously, for me, obviously, Nico Carrera has currently not shown anything to do to deserve that. And obviously for me, I do. I'll look at if Nico Carrera does show his quality in MLS, I, w I would like to see him in the Olympics. But first, he has to show his quality, and right now he is not showing it. So I do believe in a transfer back to the MLS can help Nico Carrera. So yeah. Now let's go to, Alan Senora. Alan Senora right now he's he's a he's a free agent right now. Club Independiente didn't sign him to a oh I need to I don't. I think Alan Senora didn't want to sign the extension with Independiente, so right now he's a free agent. So obviously for me, Alan Senora can probably go go for a transfer to the MLS right now. I don't think I, I, there's nothing concrete for him to go to Europe. So I do believe a transfer to the MLS can help him get those European offers. Maybe uh, Alan Senora is a pretty is a pretty good player. Um, for me, I would like to see him in the January game. Alan Senora, I, I would like to see him. Uh, um, Montreal currently ha is the is the is like the the team that currently wants him the most, and I do believe it kind of might, does make sense for Alan Senora. Um, Montreal lost, lost both of their cams, Jordan Mahalovic and Ismail Kone. So right now, I do believe that a transfer like that can help Alan Senora first get a lot of team minutes, and two to show how how. How creative he really is because Don Senora is a really creative player with the ball on his feet. So for me, I do believe that Mont he should go to Montreal um to for to to show his quality over there. Um there are current there are lots of South American players that go to the go that go to MLS and later dominate. Um like the Argentinian that uh, Atlanta United signed last season, Almada, I believe that's what his name is. He's currently now dominating in major league soccer and i can see him be another uh, like could be another example of a miguel Amaron type player that dominates that dominates in mls and later goes to europe so that can happen later for alan senora so yeah now let's go to brian Cayo. brian Cayo crying right now has been struggling to find first team minutes in europe right now and i do believe i transfer back to the ml transfer to the mls would do good for him um he was in the U seventeen World Cup in twenty nineteen with the U seventeen, um, but he has kind of like really struggled to find those minutes in Europe and abroad. So for me, he needs to go back to the MLS before it's too late. Like Wolfsburg cannot kill another career, and I and if you're bringing a Kayo, you need to make sure you get a transfer back to the MLS. You should be getting a transfer back to the MLS because right now playing in those lower like playing in the like in the academies like playing in the in the, I don't know, in the a lower division teams, like, like you're not gonna get a lot of exposure with that, and obviously, and obviously, like it's gonna be very hard for other teams to want you and into my into like make you want to get those minutes because obviously, playing in a lower lower division team kind of like it's probably not not doing too good for him right now. So I do believe a transfer transfer to the MLS would do good for Brian Kayo. So obviously enough obviously if you're Brian Kayo you don't you do not want to waste your career like Sebastian Soto and Ulianas are doing right now. 
and he currently does have the age right now where he can get go go get that transfer to MLS, do good over there, and then he because he's twenty, he's twenty years old. My my man is twenty years old, so obviously if you're him, why not just go to back to the, why not just go to MLS and show quality over there? Teams like the Chicago Fire um need those midfielders. Uh, New England Revolution they need midfielders as well. Uh, a lot of teams need a lot need midfielders in the MLS, and obviously he needs to go back to the MLS because obviously he cannot wait until he's like he's twenty twenty two twenty three, and he is still not getting minutes, and that's kind of killing his career. Like he doesn't he he I don't want him to wait that long. He he has to do it right now. He has to do it right now. And at, for, at last, we have we end this with Conrad De La Fuente. Conrad De La Fuente is right now at Olympiacos on loan for Marseille. And obviously, he has struggled a lot. Uh, in Marseille, first two games, plays amazing. He plays amazing as a, as a winger. He do, he shows his quality. He, he's like, he's, he's first, two, first two games, he looks like a world beater. So that later ends him in like a, a spot call up to the USMT in the September camp for the first three games of the World Cup qualifying. But and after that, he kind of like it kind of goes downhill for Conrad de la Fuente. He, he, his form goes down and obviously everything goes down. And obviously, then his like his like his motivation is questioned. And obviously, later that that gets him loaned out to Marseille. To I mean to Olympiacos, he doesn't get minutes at Olympiacos. So for me, right now, Conrad de la Fuente for me needs to get, at least secure those first few minutes. Like he, I've heard of him getting those like rumors of him getting go, um, of him going to Spain. But I, currently, I don't see him being a starter in Spain. He needs to go to the MLS, secure first few minutes, because that's the most important thing he has to do right now. Teams like the Chicago Fire, they will be needing a team. They will be needing players like Conrad De La Fuente. Um, but what are other teams that? I think you can take LA Galaxy to the next level. To be honest, LA Galaxy don't have a lot of good wide players in their team. So I do believe a, a team like LA Galaxy could use a guy like Conrad. Um, so there there are currently a lot of, like some teams that could use some some wingers because there are not a lot of good wingers in the MLS like especially American wingers there's not a lot of good of the not a lot of good wingers in MLS right now. Austin could probably use him, but he he can probably show his quality over there in Austin. So there's there's a bunch of team there's a bunch of places where Conrad could go. So yeah, um so yeah that's about it guys. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Adios. Bye bye. Um, I'll later make a video about about players that need to go to Europe. So that's gonna be pretty exciting. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.